Hey dudes and dudettes, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Now today I'm going to be walking you guys through the new Simon Hurley Create Stamping Foam. I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways to use this, the basics, and also answer a lot of different questions that people have had. This is such a fun way to get a lot more use out of a lot of different supplies in your craft room and get some really cool stamped backgrounds that are quick and easy. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. All right, so let's take a look at the stamping foam. Now there was a product like this about 10 years ago before I even got into the industry. I think it's now discontinued, but we wanted to bring it back but make it perfect for card makers. So let's take a look at the individual foam and kind of share the differences. So we really worked hard on the density of this foam for about a year to make sure that it holds really crisp details in it, nicely for all those detailed little stamps that you're going to be transferring. We also made this a really light gray color, so you're able to see the inks that you put onto it. So any color you can see super easily, which I really wanted. And then also, it's super easy to clean. When you're using Simon Hurley Create inks or other inks that don't usually stain, you can spray a little water and wipe it down and it'll go right back to light gray. And I also made it a perfect size for card makers. This is sized to have a nice even border around an A2 size card. So like that, you get nice white space around it, but it's a perfect even border all the way around, which is something that was really important to me to bring it to card makers. And the best part is it's four in a pack for $4.99, which I think is a really great price point for four different pieces of foam, and you can use all sides of it as well. So let's talk about this. I'm going to be using my Ranger Heat It tool, and all you have to do is heat up the piece of foam for about 10 to 15 seconds, and kind of keep your heat tool moving to keep it evenly heated. Now I like this heat tool because it evenly distributes the heat, it has a little bit of bigger of a surface area that the heat goes through, so that's why I like this, but I'll show you later in the video that you can use any heat tool. Once I've heated it up, I'm going to quickly flip it down over into a stamp and give it some good pressure all around the image. Once that's done, you should get a nice imprint like this, and we're going to move on into our stamping. So now we've created a stamp that was kind of the reverse image, and I'm going to go in with my detail blending tools and add a little bit of coloring. I love these detail blending tools because they're just like the mini ink blending tools, that same foam, but on small little sticks, and they're double-ended. So this makes it super easy to go in and get really nice detailed coloring. So I'm going in with some Simon Hurley Create inks, starting off with Traffic Cone and the centers of the flowers and just adding a little bit of color in there. Then I'm able to go in with a lighter color like Slippery When Wet and blend that out. So I'm literally putting two different colors on those tiny little flower petals. So these little detail blending tools make it super easy to do that. Now I'm going to go in onto some of the leaves, and for these they're even smaller, so you can even use the little edges of these detail blending tools to get into even tinier areas like these. But I just love that I'm able to go in with lots of different colors of inks and blend them out onto my foam. And this has a long working time. You have a lot of time for this ink to still be able to be wet and transfer down onto your cardstock. Now I'm going to fill in the background as well, and this is something that's really important with this foam, is you're able to color in the whole background since it also does the kind of negatives. So I'm going to go in here with a little bit of clear skies and fill in the whole background. Now none of this is perfect, but I'm going to go in with a little bit of water in my Distress Sprayer and spray it about three times from a little bit of a distance. I like this sprayer because you get a nice even spray and there's no real water blobs, which is super nice. Then I'm going to take this, line it up right in the center of my stark white cardstock, give it some good pressure to make sure all of the details of the image transfers, and then I'll lift it off and you get that beautiful background. I just love those detailed blenders and how we were able to get into all of those tiny areas to create this really cool watercolor background. Now I'm going to take some of the excess ink that was still on there, spray it about two more times, and then flip it over onto another piece of stark white cardstock and give it some good pressure. I like that you're also able to use any excess ink, and this gives a little bit more of a washed out background, but it's still cool that you're able to get kind of a two for one with those little blending tools since you spent a little bit of time to do that to get a whole other background out of it. Now to clean this off, I just spray a little bit of water down onto the foam and use my cloth to wipe it off. I'm using Simon Hurley Create inks here, which usually don't stain stamps, so they clean off really easily off the foam. Now you can totally use other inks on here, but if they usually stain stamps, they're probably going to stain your foam as well. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to heat it again, and this is going to reset the foam and make it go flat again, and then you can reuse it over and over and over. So if you thought heat embossing was really nice and satisfying to watch, this is as well. It pops right back up to the surface, makes it nice and flat, and then you're able to keep using it over and over, which I love. 
So now let's move on into cutting down the backgrounds. Now I like to go in with the Tim Holtz and Tonic Guillotine Trimmer because it has this nice plastic guide for your hands. But I also like that guide because there's certain parts on it where you can kind of eyeball it to line your background up with that and then it'll create a nice even white border around the edge. So I just line it up with the same kind of guideline on that plastic guard and it creates a nice border for me. And the thing is if you stamped it crooked all you need to do is make sure your ink, inked part touches that line all the way across and that's going to get you a nice straight background and keep that nice border around there. So then I added that down onto a prickly pear card base and added the sentiment from the Doodle Floral stamp set uh, that says thank you for your kindness and I just love how simple that was to finish off that beautiful background that we stamped. Now a lot of people ask why would you make a different imprint of the stamp? So this is that Playful Petals background stamp that we just used. Now this is how it stamps normally. So you get those fun lined images and you would have to go in and color those all in if you wanted to. But here, by adding it down with that foam, you're able to get a nice colored background and it does the opposite. So it leaves those flowers white. So you're able to go in with a lot of different colors and stamp down that rectangle of design. Now I'm going to go in with Crazy Daisies and do the exact same thing. I cut a little bit of the heating time out here, but heat it for 10 to 15 seconds, and then again turn it onto the stamp and give it some good pressure. But here I wanted to share how to do a quicker inking method and not get all of the little details in here. So what I like to do with my ink pads is I'm going to take some Simon Hurley Create inks again, and this time instead of stamping it on a stamp like I normally would with an up and down motion, I go kind of in a smooshing motion, kind of a circular motion to add my inks down onto the foam. This I find is the best way to add the inks down. You get lots of ink onto the foam's surface, and then also it doesn't have any texture to it either. And then if I got any overlapping color on my ink pad, it's not going to harm it. Just wipe it off with a dry cloth until it goes back to the normal color on the edge. Then I'm going to go in and spray it down a little bit with water again from a distance. And then I'll stamp it down onto my struck white cardstock. This was so easy to do. I love the blends in between where you get different colors from those three. But this was just a really easy way to add ink down onto the background with that swiping motion instead of the stamping up and down. Here I'm using a different kind of heat tool. This is a Wagner heat tool and it has more of a condensed kind of area. I usually use this for heat embossing, but it totally works for the foam as well. You're just going to want to keep it moving a little bit more than the Ranger heat tool because again it has more condensed heat. So it'll just take a little bit longer and you want to keep your heat tool moving so that it doesn't burn anything. Now you can also use clear stamps when you're using this foam. I recently came up with a pack of Simon Hurley Create acrylic blocks, and besides these two in the pack being the perfect thickness and having grid lines, which is super nice, it also has that larger acrylic block that's just a little bit bigger than the stamping foam. And this block is going to be perfect for making backgrounds and lining up your different designs for stamping down onto your foam. So I'm going to take that same Doodle Floral stamp set and take a lot of the different lined images and line them all up on my acrylic block in the background that I want to stamp. You can create different scenes with these clear stamps or anything like that. You just want to make sure you have all of your photopolymer stamps ready to go and on the block at once. You can't stamp one down and then reheat it and keep making a scene. You want everything to be built out on the scene. So that's why I love that this acrylic block is sized perfectly for that. So again, I've cut out a little bit of heating, but you want to heat it for 10 to 15 seconds. And then I'll take my acrylic block and I like to stamp it into the foam. The acrylic block also provides a nice even surface since it's a nice hard block that you're able to get even pressure along the whole thing and get a great stamped impression to create your stamp out of. So those create a nice indents there. You can either stamp it down like that or also press your foam into the stamp like we've been doing with the background stamps. But I do like the fact that there's the hard acrylic block because it's going to give you the most even pressure if you stamp down into it. Now I'm going to take my ink pads and I'm using a little bit of Crown Me, Midnight Snack, Clear Skies, and Psych. And I'm just going in and again blending these colors together in that swiping motion all along my stamping foam. Now once I'm done with that, I've sprayed it down and I'm stamping it down onto my Simon Hurley Create Stark White cardstock. And I just love how this looks. We created our own fun background with those clear stamps. You can see all of that awesome detail, but of course you don't have to create a background. You can create focal images and a whole scene, but I just love that it leaves those images white and gives you a nice colored background. Now let's talk about using stencils. Of course you could use a stencil with a little bit less plastic on it like this one. And when you stamp that into it, it's going to give you more raised areas as the stamping area, and that's going to give 
give you pretty much the same effect as the stencil would. It just is a little bit quicker to stamp it down like the stencil, but you'll get pretty much the same design as blending through your stencil. Now, if you have a stencil with more plastic surface area like this, it's going to create those raised areas, but there's going to be a lot of surface area in between them that's still going to ink. So it just creates a nice halo around it, but still stamps that full rectangle, which is a totally different look than you would usually get with your stencil, and I love either one. Now I'm going to show you with this Honey Hive stencil that we just recently released from Simon Hurley Create. So I'm heating up my foam for 10 to 15 seconds, and once that's all nice and heated, I'm going to turn it over and stamp it into my Honey Hive stencil, giving it some good pressure, and then when I lift this off, you'll see just a little bit of a raised area there, but there was a lot of plastic on the stencil, so it's going to create a little bit of design, and then there's going to be a lot of area in between it. That area is going to stamp because it's a super thin, you know, design area, and it's not super raised like a normal stamp would be. So I'm applying my inks down, and I wanted to also give you a little tip. If you're kind of blending a darker color into a lighter color, you can always go back in with that lighter color and blend it in a little bit more to get those colors to mix and blend together. Or you could go in with a little mini ink blending tool and kind of blot in between those colors, which is going to help get a nice smooth blend as well. So those two tips I hope help if you're trying to blend in between colors really nicely. Now here I'm going in with a light pressure, that same swirling motion, and it's going to ink up the whole stamp, but again, leave a little bit of a halo around that design. So it creates something totally different than you would usually get with your stencil, and I'm really in love with the look. So stencils with more surface area of stencil plastic will look like this. Now if you also want to stamp with objects around your craft room, you could totally do that. I've been doing things like paper towel, but this scoreboard has also been a huge win for me, and I can't wait to see you guys playing in your craft rooms to find different textures to stamp into. So again, I'm going to heat this up with my heat tool for 10 to 15 seconds, turn it over, and stamp it into my scoreboard here, giving it lots of nice pressure so that the stamp pattern transfers. And there you get a nice lined stamped image. I don't have anything like this in my collection, so it was really nice to be able to do it with a scoreboard on my craft room. So I'll take this, ink it up a little bit, spray it down, and then stamp it down onto my card. And it just creates for a nice cool textured background for your card. And you can put any busy images on top of it. It just creates a little bit of texture and interest depending on what colors you use. Now I used this same thing for this card here. I just stamped it down with a little bit less water and you get a lighter effect. But I love that look of almost like corrugated cardboard with that fun texture. And then I used the Crazy Daisy background stamp. This one's a peel apart, so I was able to peel apart those stamps and use them separately on the front of my card here. I love peel aparts because I was able to use them as kind of focal point images or stamp it as the full background. But I just love how this fun card turned out. It's super fun and playful with those images. Now next I'm going to share how to stamp without water because that was a question a lot of people had as well. So I'll heat that up. I cut out a little bit of that heating time there, but it's heated up for 10 to 15 seconds, and then I'll stamp it into my Happy Mail background stamp. I love this one with all those different envelopes and cards on it. Now here I'm going to go in with a little bit of clear skies and again lightly ink it up with that kind of smooshing method all over my foam stamp. And then I'm going to take my stark white cardstock and stamp it right down without spraying any water down giving it some good pressure, this time even more pressure to make sure everything transfers nicely because that water is not there to aid it. But you get a lighter color than you usually would and it still captures all of those nice details. So yes, you can totally stamp it without water. Here I'm comparing what it looks like without water and with water using the exact same color and you can see the total difference there. The one with water is a little bit darker, but I find it doesn't lose too much detail since I'm using that distress sprayer and it's a nice fine mist. Now to finish off this card, I'm using the Dudettes stamp set. I love this one because it has interchangeable heads and bodies, and you can create some really fun cards for the women in your life. So I'm going to take this one and stamp down some of the images. I'm starting off with the head image here and some Jet Black Archival ink and stamping it down. I love Jet Black Archival ink because it's waterproof, but it also leaves a little bit of open time where I'm able to go in and throw over a layer of clear embossing powder and heat set that so it's nice and shiny. That clear embossing powder is really important when I go in with my watercoloring next because it's going to create a nice barrier for my water to not leak out when I'm watercoloring. Now I'm stamping down a body from this set, lining it up just underneath the head there, and I like these Simon Hurley Create Acrylic Blocks because they're the perfect thickness that I'm able to see through and give some really great pressure when I'm lining things up. Then I made a little bit of a palette with my Simon Hurley Create inks onto my craft sheet, and I'm going to start my watercoloring. I lay down a little bit of water with my brush to get things blending before I add any color in. And then for my skin tone, I mix a little bit of Gur with some Over the Moon. And you can mix more or less depending on how light or dark you want the skin tone to be. But I like that you have options with mixing those colors together. Then I'm going to color in her blue jeans. And again here, I'm able to go in and do a light wash of color with a little bit of water at first. And then I'll go in and add a little bit more shading with less water on my brush and the same color. 
Same thing with the hair here. I added in a nice wash of color and then I'll go in back with a little bit of that color with less water and add some darker spots for highlights and dimension. Then in that stamp set, I have kind of some sweaters and dresses that you can use with different patterns on them. This one coordinates with this shirt right here, and I'm going to stamp it down using a little bit of prom queen, and then I'm going to roll some midnight snack from the bottom up, and then I'm going to stamp it down right onto the card. I just love all of the awesome detail that's in that little shirt there. It's so much fun that you get that cool detail on that sweater, and I love the fact that I included those in the set. Then I cut everything out and added it onto my card, and I used the background with the envelopes that use no water so that there's a little bit less interest going on, but I love how this scene turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed all of the different examples, and of course I will be sharing lots more videos in the future using the Simon & Hurley Create Stamping Foam, because this was just the tip of the iceberg with all you can do with it. Be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite, give this video a big thumbs up, and click that subscribe button so you never miss another card making and crafting video like this one from me. Alright, I'll see you guys very soon for another card making and crafting video. Bye!